all that came together. Yeah, I have a little uh, My story that someone sent to me. You uh, probably, you know, Hannah uh, Peterson. Mm -hmm. You know, she used to be Debbie P Peterson. She Where worked at the gateway at the center. And uh, she write, this is something Debbie that Meyer. happened. Was... Yeah, and it was Debbie Meyer for a while. And, uh, but anyway, she sent this to me, but this kind of shows how intimately Baba figures into her, into our life. In, in these ways that have just definitely Baba's signature. Anyway, she, this is what she writes. <clears throat> uh, I was staying at Jane Jane's, which meaning Jane Haynes' house, that's near uh, where Kitty and Elizabeth lived. I was staying at Jane's to be near Kitty to help out and also to care take care of J Jane's dog, Bo, while Jane Haynes and Elizabeth Patterson were on vacation. They would often go to China and distant places. It was a Saturday night and I went to the closet in Charles's old room, Charles Haynes's old room, where I was staying to change into something fresh. This is at the end of the day. Then I left to walk to the program at the meeting place. As I was passing Baba's house, which is along the way, I heard myself say, I should have picked something else to wear. I kept walking. Doesn't look good on me. I kept walking and walking. I really don't look good in this. Finally, I thought there's, there's time to turn around and put something else on. So I went back. So she went back to Jane Haynes's house. I opened the closet door and smoke poured out. I had not noticed that Jane had placed a pillow on the top shelf and there was a bare bulb there and the pillow was pressing against it and it was about to burst into flames. So Baba took care of that by using my vanity. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, beautiful. In other words, Baba, you know, took care of that by using my vanity. And, you know, that reminds me of, of Bob Brown. Uh, you know, a number of you, you know, knew Bob Brown, and uh, and we worked together for decades and decades, and at the center. And the thing about Bob is he would he he was kind of emotionally needy, and he would, you know, he would have some problem, and he'd approach one of the guests and ask them their opinion, and he'd find some other guests and ask their opinion about his situation, and and all this kind of stuff. Uh, and I used to think, wow, you know, this is amazing. I, years go by, he still kind of has this neediness. But after he passed on, I realized he had connected with so many people personally uh, that came so many guests, far more than almost all the other caretakers combined. So Baba kept his neediness, his emotional neediness there because it worked beautifully for his purposes. I don't know, Jim, if he ever approached you to, <laughs> with some of his <laughs> problems, but I heard many of his problems. But it's kind of beautiful. Like some of these, some of our weaknesses are play beautifully into what Baba has wants us to do. Jeff, I yeah. I, know, I know that um, when Bob would do that, I know the reaction that I had was. Oh my God, all these people, these caretakers, it was so endearing. It was like, oh my God, they're so human. And they, they're they just like me. I've got all these crazy, crazy things going on too. And he's just like, oh my God, it was so connecting, so, so bonding on a, such a personal level, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it's amazing because he was such a great musician, wrote so many <laughs> songs and living there and working at the center. You know, you'd think that he would be uh, not needy, but actually feel quite um, good about himself. But <laughs> he always used to worry about uh, having a brain tumor. I've got a brain tumor. I mean, he went on for about 20 years that he, he thought he had a brain tumor. And sure enough, he did have a brain tumor. 
And it did emerge. It was a very slow growing one. And he was actually right. And many years later, uh, it became a, a, a serious situation and <clears throat> he had to be operated on. And we took him to, into the hospital over there in Columbia, South Carolina. And when he came out of the surgery, the doctor was telling Jane Brown and myself that he had between three and nine months to live. He started to tell us that and we rushed him out of the room. I said, don't tell him in his condition that he's got be three, between three and nine months to live. He will die in three and nine to nine months, you know? And so we, I rushed him out of there. I mean, I was kind of upset with the doctor. Why do you do that? And he lived for another seven years, you know? <laughs> I mean, of course, the doctor's not accountable for <laughs> those kinds of things, but I mean, he was that far off, yeah. you know, lived another seven years. <clears throat> hey, I thought some of you have heard this poem, but I, I, I thought I would read it again. And this is, um, <clears throat> there was one, uh, there's one family that uh, whose the daughters uh, <clears throat> were part of the Ross family, and they had met Bob. the The father met Baba in '31. He was the one that played the bagpipes for Baba in England, and the mother uh, met Baba at Harmon on Hudson. And they had three daughters, and one of them was uh, Rosie. And I'm going to uh, read this. <clears throat> she met Baba when she was a little girl. So I'll read this. Meeting Baba by Rosemary Richards. I was seven. Do I remember? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, wait. I'll, I'll start over. What? Okay. I was seven. Do I remember? Oh, yes, forever. All time ceased. I walked into a great circle of light and complete protection. No one, no thing, no sound. Only the essence and the voice of the silent one. How could that be? What did he say? Where was I? Enclosed in light where no harm could penetrate. No harm. I was lifted up. The circle was beyond where I could sense. Great love light blinded me with the enormity of this happening. I was seven. Do I now understand how incredible this event was on eternity's clock? Have problems vanished? No. Have challenges eluded me? No. Do I cry? Yes. Tears of joy, fear, love, hope for the less sensitive humanity. Have I been hurt? Yes, deeply by many people. Am I vulnerable? Oh yes, vulnerable to the pain my physically and mentally fragile family have endured. Vulnerable to the horror of man harming man and to anger and unkindness in our world. Why have I been so blessed? I have this knowing, I have love. I am so small, he is so great. What can I give? The only gift worth sharing. That in all the turmoil, misunderstandings, confusions, mistakes, wars, tumult, there is hope, there is love. How can I be so brazen? I have a responsibility because I glimpsed God, the Lord may hear, he is real. I sat on the light, on the lap of God. <clears throat> that was beautiful. Yeah, she met, met Baba as a little girl, walking into a great expanse of light. Wow. So, hey, uh, uh, anybody have anything to 
to share. Jim, any chance you could uh, tell your story of how you heard of Baba? Right on the spot like this? Um, sure, I'll give a short version of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one, of the, one of the highlights, um, uh, I had met, this was in high school, I first heard of Baba, and six months later, I moved into what best we can describe it as a Baba commune uh, down in Miami. And um, after a couple of weeks being there, uh, the guy that uh, I shared a room with, Jeff, you might remember Benji Lieberman? No, I don't. Benji oh. Lieberman, no. Yeah. Um, he had a huge Linot painting, like a six by six foot Linot painting between our beds. And um, leading up for a couple of weeks, I've been reading um, the Everything and the Nothing and uh, I think the Discourses. And I, after a couple of weeks, I mean, I was reading these every night and, and uh, I'm, I'm like 18 or 19 years old at this point. And I'm reading these things, and they're just absolutely blowing me away. I'm just amazed at them. But I'm also having – I'm just like, who is this guy, you know? I mean, he it's incredible he's writing, but he's an absolute – he's nuts. He thinks he's God, you know? He's just nuts. It can't be. And um, after a couple of weeks of that um, – one evening I got finished reading it and the thought came up. It was, um, well, if he really is who he says he is, um, that would be the end of the journey. That would be it. That the, the, you know, the search is over. And I'm like, search, what search, you know, <laughs> but, but it was, you know, that was what was coming through. And that morning about three thirty four in the morning, um, you might have heard this story, Jeff. I think I've told it to you before, but it's been a long time. It's always, it's always new. Yeah. Um, I woke up and that six foot by six foot painting had moved from the wall of which it had been nailed to, had moved to the foot of my bed about 10 feet away. And as I woke up, I saw this painting coming down on top of me. And Baba's face in the painting hit my was was going to hit my face, and this is a big painting, and it was I was it happened so fast I couldn't scream, but it was it was actually just light as a feather, and I picked it up and put it over to the wall, and um, got out of the room and ended up walking over to Brickell Avenue over to the uh, Biscayne Bay. And just sat there and wept for a couple of hours because it was, you know, Baba's way of, you know, the message was coming through. You needed, you wanted an answer. What else can I do besides hitting you over the head? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that was the uh, a first of a, a many uh, dramatic things that Baba did knocking me on my head to make it absolutely, you know, um, Conviction, as Adi used to say, you know, conviction. I need a lot of head knocking uh, over the first couple of years. Still need it. <laughs> yeah. But that that was a highlight. Yeah. That was towards yeah. the beginning, you know. Did you ever tell Lynn Ott <laughs> the, the, the effect had, his yes. painting had on you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting story to follow up with that story is Benji sold that painting back to Lynn. And a number of years later, about five, six years later, um, we lost track of the painting. And it always had a special meaning for me for obvious reasons. And um, in the meantime, this is five or six, seven years later, uh, I had moved to Atlanta and I had just started going to school there for post-grad work. And it was really, I had my second thoughts and I was really wondering if this is where I should be because a lot of crazy things were going on. And I remember that, uh, that Friday basically going, all right, Baba, you know, if you want me to be here, my God, you're going to give me a sign to be here because uh, this is just nuts. You know, I don't know if I can, you know, 
And I go down to the BABA meeting in Atlanta for the first time, and I walk into the BABA meeting place in Little Five Points, and the first thing that I see is that painting hanging up on the wall, you know? <laughs> it was the center painting. And it was like, okay, Baba. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. <All right. laughs> I know, isn't that? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, wonderful, James. Mm-hmm. You know, that reminds me, when the first Baba meeting I went to, that's another whole story, and back yeah. in the 60s, <clears throat> and a there was a, 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 a photograph during the period of silence, I opened my eyes because they asked Bob, you to think of Bob who was in India and I didn't even know who he was, you know, so I kept my eyes open, but there was a large photograph of Baba on at the front of the room on a painting easel and it and underneath it said, I, I'm, the, I'm the one who loves you more than you can ever love yourself. Mm. It was lettered on the bottom. <clears throat> And so that painting came alive and Baba came out of it. And that was how, how I came to Baba. So then years later, I was invited to Chicago to give a, for a Sahavas. And I was kind of very uncomfortable. I didn't feel comfortable about speaking and all of that. And what was I going to say? And uh, maybe should I sing something? I, I was really uncomfortable. And the meetings were at... Uh, Carol and Myron Kovalovich, <clears throat> and they, they had a beautiful building that they owned, and in the basement was the Baba Center, mm-hmm. and so I'm, you know, all these people are there, and I'm feeling uncomfortable, but I go down there, and I get down there, and lo and behold, there's the exact photograph with, I mean, it's the one from the Monday Night Group with the saying on the bottom of it that was kind of lettered. You know, the very same, the exact same photograph. Somehow when they disbanded the Monday night group in New York, somehow that photograph was sent to Chicago, to the Chicago group. So that was the one. So Baba, it's just amazing how Baba does these things, you know. Yeah. Just, just lovely. Hey, well, um. Yeah, let's see. I don't know. Um, I, I found a story that I think is kind of touching. <clears throat> um, see if I can. It's a short story. There was <clears throat> a a famous poet, a prominent poet in Pakistan. Uh, his name was uh, Saib As- Asmi, A-S-M-I, Asmi. And he had written a, a poem to Baba. I mean, he was kind of well known and everything. He wrote this poem, Sahabi Zaman. I, I, I should I get a need to get somebody uh, uh, Nasreen, how do you pronounce it? Sahib is Saman? Yes, Sahib is Zaman. Sahib is Zaman. Uh-huh. So he wrote a poem that was, <clears throat> have you heard of this guy named uh, Asmi? No. Okay. <clears throat> how, do and, how, how do you spell it? How do you spell it? A-S-M-I. No, I, we never heard of it. Uh-huh. Uh, I may add, <clears throat> I have heard his name, and it is Asmi. Asmi. Asmi is man, man, mana. And uh-huh. I means the <clears throat> master of the world. Yeah, the, the, is a man uh, means master of the world. Master of the world. So he wrote this poem, yeah. and uh, the Muslim authorities of Pakistan... Uh, imprisoned him. <clears throat> so he was imprisoned, I don't know for how long, but for having written this. But time went by, and somehow one judge felt that this was this was something that the judge let him off because this was his opinion. He wasn't trying to push Baba on anybody. This was his own personal opinion. 
and he and so he was released from prison. And so this was in 1955. He had never met Baba and, and Baba had the Sahabas at Maribad, so he wanted to go there. And so he took a he got took the train and I think it's at Dund is one of the stations that's near uh, before you get to Ahmednagar. And while he was there on the state uh, railway platform, there was somebody with a Baba button. <clears throat> and he went over and said, have you met, uh, have you seen Meher Baba? He said, yes, I've seen Meher Baba. It was, happened to be Balna too. <laughs> he went up to this guy, he ki kissed Balna too on the cheeks and then kissed the eyes that had seen Baba. He was so moved. <clears throat> And so then, then they proceeded together and they got to Maribad. Now he was quite known and everything, but the whole time he was there at the Sahavas, he would walk around with his eyes on the ground. He wouldn't look up. And so here's kind of some of the exchanges. Uh, um, so, so, <clears throat> So he, uh, someone said, you know, uh, so it happened that in the days following this meeting, uh, this meeting, as the Sahavas program progressed, Ball noticed that Saib Asmi did not even look at him. Ball often passed him, but Saib Asmi would not even give Ball a glance. He would be looking down and walking. And one day, Baal approached him and asked, Saib asked me, do you recognize me? We traveled on the train together. He replied, yes, of course, you are Baal Natu. Why do you ask such a question? Baal asked him, you don't even look at me now. But on the train, you were so friendly while we were talking about Baba. You even kissed me on my, uh, on my eyes. And now, even when you pass me, you don't, even seemed to notice me. Asmi, uh, Sayyib Asmi's reply said, do you know what this place is? This place is so sacred because of Baba's physical presence that even the seventh heaven bows down to it in obeisance. Where is the time to even glance at anyone? I am drowned in the sacredness of this place. Baba did say about uh, Saib Asmi that he would become a perfect master in his future life. He, he announced that in this program. Another uh, uh, guy came, Samir Diljan, who was also present at the Sahavas meeting, noticed that Saib Asmi never looked at Baba's face. He would be looking down all the time with his head lowered. So uh, the he asked, Sayyab Asmi, I have always noticed that you are staring down. Why don't you look at Baba's face? Everyone is taking advantage and absorbing the beauty of Baba's face, but you don't even look at him. Why do you miss out on such an opportunity? And Sayyab Asmi replied, I am looking for those eyes which are worthy of staring at his face. I am looking for those eyes which are worthy of staring at his face. Such was Saib Asmi's love for Baba that he considered himself unworthy to look at the divine beauty of the Lord's human face and his human eyes. So, kind of a beautiful thing. I'm trying, basically, I'm trying to find the eyes with which to look at him. Boy, beautiful. So, hey, anybody um, have anything? <clears throat> Priya, what about you? Ah. Yeah, Baba, yeah. I've been, um, you know, um, this is quote by Hafiz, and I revisited it last night. 
and I'd like to share it here. Yeah, go ahead. Even after all this time, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. Look what happens with a love like that. It lights up the whole sky. I'll repeat it one more time. Yeah. Even after all this time, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. Look what happens with a love like that. It lights up the whole sky. Yeah. That's my old roommate who did that, did that version. Dan Ladinsky. Last word again. Uh, yeah. It is like... Last word you can repeat. Look what happens with a love like that. It lights up the whole sky. Okay. Yeah, Baba. Yeah, there it. I, I there's this that was put to music as well. It lights up the whole sky. There was a beautiful uh, line from. I don't know if I can find it, unfortunately, from uh, Balna too. Hmm. I won't be able to find it. <clears throat> hey, um, so one thing I was thinking of, but I may not bring it up now, but um, um, people have trouble with thoughts. I mean, I pe people tell me that thoughts are going by and how to stop thoughts from just that ticker tape of thoughts going by all day long. And, uh, and I, I gathered a, a method of dealing with that from uh, Darwin Shaw and Erich. But I don't want to necessarily go into that right now because there are others of you that may want to say things. It'd what be great we... to hear what you uh, have learned from Erich and... Uh... And Darwin uh, Shaw. Darwin. Yes, yes. Not the naturalist, but the uh, supernaturalist. <laughs> um, well, let's see. Um, do, how to, what, what, what's your situation with thoughts? How do you, do you, are you bothered by thoughts for periods of time? I can speak for myself. I am. What about Jasima? <clears throat> do you have thoughts going by? Yeah. Thought, thoughts yeah. that you don't exactly want, but they're that you're, yes. you know, your, your awareness is stuck, stuck following them. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly about the future worries and all. Yeah. yeah. So this is what uh, Darwin, <clears throat> I gather from Darwin. Oh, good. Mayor Prasad is here too. Although Mayor Prasad has heard a bit of this. Um, we're talking about thoughts and dealing with thoughts. <clears throat> so this is, this is the thing that I gathered from them is what is feeding the thoughts? You know, what, what is feeding the thoughts? I mean, you can come up with counter thoughts or you can try to change the subject and think of something else. Those are methods. <clears throat> but when they're very persistent and you can't kind of change them with counter thoughts or switch the subject, turn to a different channel. <clears throat> they're, they're there. You're worried like you have to give a talk in front of a, a 500 people, you know, and you're like worried. So what Darwin and Eric said is it's being fed by some emotion. And it might be fear in the case of stage fright. It might be anger in the case of your boss and, and you resent the way you're treated by your boss, whatever. So going that you put your attention on the emotion without thinking about it. Be, be aware of it. Be aware of the, say, fear that you feel. The first tremor of 
anger or the first quivering of fear or the first notes of sadness, go there. If you can go there, ideally, if you can give that to Baba at that point, rather than let it go downstream and the mind picks up and, and creates a mess out of it. Because what, say, if you take fear, fear is not bad as a pure emotion, but once it flows downstream and the mind gets a hold of it, it's, it, it, figure, it projects in the future, it goes back to the past, it tells you how you need to, how to protect yourself and, and how to avoid some future discomfort. So, so what, um, what Darwin and Erich would say is focus on that feeling, on the emotion, and it registers in your body somewhere. You know, like fear is kind of just below the, the heart center. Anger might be right in the middle of the heart. Sadness is, is in a deep part of the heart. And luckily, it interf the emotion if, uh, interfaces with the body. So that it's possible to follow the sensation that it has in your, in your body so that you can follow that down below rather than going up into your head. I don't know if that makes sense. I mean, a lot of people, they say they get a, a shot of fear and they, they, they automatically come down and try to analyze that fear, you know, and then they go back up and then you follow the fear that comes down and, and comes up with another interpretation. So it's staying with the fear, staying with the anger, in its pure form before it gets translated into, before the mind gets a hold of it. And if you can give that to Baba, that's great. If not, you can even just follow it. You know, for hours, you can follow a particular emotion. And when you do follow that feeling, you'd be surprised how your thoughts diminish tremendously. You know, is if, if you stay with the anger, the feeling of anger, the experience of anger, you'd be surprised that the thoughts will diminish tremendously. I don't know if that, I mean, it's too bad we don't have a situation <clears throat> where, you know, but <clears throat> you can't follow your feelings <coughs> with your awareness and, and think at the same time. You have to kind of go upstairs to think. And your awareness is down down at a lower level following the emotion. I don't know if that, does that make any sense? I'm gonna ask Mayor Prasad. Yeah, Jeff, that, you know, that's definitely totally makes sense to me. Um, a lot of times I, I do find that you know, Baba used to ask people, what are you thinking? So uh, every once in a while that does happen to me where um, if, I'm, if I catch myself thinking of something other than, you know, Baba, then I, I just ask, oh, what, I, what was I thinking until now? And then divert the, you know, thoughts to Baba. And that I have, I catch that, uh, in fact, Baba, reminds me, hey, you're thinking of something else other than me. Every once in a while that happens, you know, every few minutes that happens, whenever I'm yeah. thinking of something else. <clears throat> I, I find myself um, um, uh, doing that mainly when, you know, when you, when you start a work or before you start a work, you think of Baba and after finishing the work, you think of Baba. That's, that's the case where you find that more often um, in my experience that's the case but yeah um, other times you know you also question was there any value in that thought at all a lot of times yeah. it's just thoughts and they yeah. have they carry absolutely zero value and in that case you know you just uh, um, you know, divert your attention and see yeah I mean that's the if you can if you can change the channel to Baba and get off of the uh, <laughs> off of the pop station, you're doing well. But the thing is, is that it's possible to 
I mean, it's possible over time so that your consciousness is always at a feeling level. Occasionally it goes and thinks about something, but you're, you're, you, you train your whole consciousness to be at the heart level. So you're, <clears throat> you, you still have the use of your mind, but you don't, you don't go up into your mind. So you can track your feelings because that, that gives you a, a, a better assessment of, of the room that you're in or the mood that you're in or whatever activity you're going to be facing. It's better to get at a feeling level rather than what the mind comes up with. Yeah. You know. Sometimes, you know, um, in, in my experience anyway, it's amazing the amount of time we spend in, in thinking about self-worth in front of others' eyes. You know, how, what do other people think about me? And, you know, what am I worth? That kind of a thing, especially this happens um, during work days where you're, you're constantly thinking about that. And once you get to that analyzing part, oh, this is what I was spending most of my time. That whole thing, you know, just goes away and it frees up your mind so much. Once you get to that point that, um, you know, for me anyway, I figured that I was spending a lot of time mainly at, you know, thinking about self-worth in front of other size. And, you know, once I uh, figured that that was the case, that whole thing is removed from the mind because I, once I know that that's the reason. I basically figured, okay, they, it has no value at all. It has zero value when I think about it. So just, you know, that completely yeah. goes away. So, you know, for other, I don't know about other people, but it may be different from each person. But, you know, once you know that's where you're spending most of your time, that will, you know, you, you have to question whether that has any value and then just leave it. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is say, take something like self-worth. What is it? I mean, uh, unworthiness. What is it that feeds unworth? What is the emotion that feeds unworthiness? That's taking this a different direction. I mean, uh, say, suppose you can't go to Baba with it and, and, and get it dissolved. It's still with you, the feeling of unworthiness. So what is the emotion that's feeding the unworthiness? You know, it could be fear. You know, if I, if I don't uh, make up to, if I don't uh, make, uh, what are you going to say? I don't uh, come up to the mark. You know, yeah. then I'm I'm kind of worthless. It's a fear. Right. right. So go un yeah. under that and and hang in that hang out with that fear. If you can give some of that fear to Baba, so much the better. And you'd be surprised at how that diminishes the thinking, because you get into giving this fear to Baba. You know, or you can track it for a while and and be giving it to Baba at the same time. But the the you know, like the Wizard of Oz. I mean, did you ever see the Wizard of Oz, the movie? No, I did not. Oh, well, Dorothy is going to see the Wizard of Oz. And the Wizard of Oz has got this huge <laughs> phantasmagora of a of a stage and this is all powerful and everything. Mm. But what happens is just uh, the, her dog goes over and finds the, 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 the wizard who's just this little guy who creates this monstrous scene and everything. But it's really quite a small little guy that's creating this. In the same way, the emotions are quite simple and pure, and they're, they're really small. And they're actually quite beautiful. But then the mind gets a hold of it and it gets magnified tremendously. That's the, that's, that's the thing. The mind has a way of making... Uh, a, a lot out of that. But by following your feeling, you're, you'll actually ha have very few thoughts in the course of a day, right. except except in a practical uh, use. Yeah, go ahead. Um, what do you mean by following Jeff, like being in state of that feeling? or uh, like Well, you bring your awareness to that feeling. Say, suppose it's uh, fear. I mean, fear is one of the core emotions in us. I mean, uh, so you go down and feel that 
that fear and where it is on your body and it helps you know you can feel that there's a certain place in your body where you feel that fear by just staying with that without thinking about it and even say give that to baba or just stay with it you'd be surprised you can't be down there at the level of fear and think at the same time because you have to kind of go upstairs to think you know, so you keep your awareness down. See, like, think of, um, think, let's <laughs> just say, say, think of your boss, you know, and what, what the feeling of, of your boss brings up in you, in, down in, in, at the lower, in your heart area. Do you feel anything? Any, I mean, any like fear or anxiety? or anger, anything like that? Not fear, but anxiety. You feel some anxiety. Yeah. So that anxiety, see, most people don't want to stay with the anxiety. They want to think about the anxiety, you know, rather than going down and just being with the anxiety. The anxiety isn't as scary as what the mind makes it into. You know, I, I don't know if this makes sense, but it, it's been invaluable in my life. You know, you can, <clears throat> you can hang out with those things and they are not as huge as, as the mind makes them out to be. Thank what you. about you, Priya? Oh, good, Priya, what? I was wondering if the same can be said about hurt. When you hurt, hurt. hurt, exactly. Oh. Hurt is the same. That feeling of hurt, staying with that feeling of hurt, <clears throat> if you stay with the hurt <clears throat> and not, not let the mind get in. I mean, so here's what happens is that you get hurt and then automatically go up into your mind and you're going to plot, wow, well, I'm going to watch out for this person. I, you know, I don't like that. You know, oh, wait, when they do this again, I'm going to do this. But to avoid all of that mental activity, <clears throat> just stay with the hurt. And, and it, it will, a lot of the thought will subside. And the hurt is, Baba gave this figure like someone slaps you. Say, so suppose I come up and slap you. That sting goes away in a, in a few seconds. But what your mind makes of that may last a lifetime. Or I, you know, I, I'm never going to see that person again. I, we, we come in with an interpretation, <clears throat> even though the, the sting can go away in, in a matter of seconds. If The same way if someone hurts you, it's possible for that hurt to run its course by giving it to Baba and staying with it and giving it to Baba, or even just being aware of it so that the mind doesn't get in there and start coming up with some strategy of how you're going to deal with that person who hurt you. <laughs> Because that, that all that strategy is not going to help. You know, it, it's only going to cause the more complication. That doesn't mean that you just walk around and let people hurt you. You can snap back or something like that. But I'm just talking about at a feeling level. Does that make, try going, I mean, I, this is just, you know, this is kind of my own uh <clears throat> craziness like just picture a hurt i mean see if you can get a sensation of hurt where is that hurt where do you feel the hurt here my yeah. throat yeah hot yeah that hurt can be given to baba <clears throat> and if you give it to baba this is then it, you don't have to be hurt again as much <clears throat> In other words, I mean, I give this example, like suppose I've got jealousy in me. I, I go and I feel that jealousy in me when there's no outer circumstance. I just feel that jealousy in me and I give that jealousy as best as I can to Baba. <clears throat> then, it, then it doesn't have to necessarily play itself out in my life. But if I don't give the jealousy in me to Baba, then what happens is life gets me to fall in love with this woman. 
and we we go together for a while and then she falls in love with somebody else and then bam i got the jealousy now if i had given that to baba you know so it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to play itself out externally does that make sense absolutely in the same way with hurt <clears throat> you know Except but anyway the huh? mind tends to i think sometimes the mind tends to jump and want to take an action so yeah. if i do spend time with my hurt and i spend time talking about it with baba then i get this sense that you know baba forgive so beautifully and so generously yeah even if you can't forgive <clears throat> you at least don't have to strike back yeah with the hurt you know that's a major step anyway that's thank you <clears throat> look at it and give it up you know yeah and i think these situations draw out the core emotions that are very hard to get at you know some of these extreme situations bring up the core emotion bring them up so that we can surrender the bits and pieces of ourself to baba and then that makes more room for him to live in us you know anyway that was that's one of those any anyone else have uh, uh, on this subject you can always try it and see i mean it, it was a great help to me because i i think when i'm up here this is like three dimensional and at the heart level is multi dimensional up here looking at life through the mind is is like looking through the binoculars turned the wrong way uh, around the wrong way and from the heart everything is up close and intimate <clears throat> i mean it's a a real observable difference pam what do you, uh, uh pam what do you say well this is right up my alley <laughs> <laughs> it's up all of our alleys think and think and think i have a headache for myself <laughs> <laughs> have you ever <laughs> have you ever tried to track it down to the core emotion that's feeding the thinking no and i need to do that more you're right on yeah. and, and there's nothing i mean we have like i mean what one of the core emotions is is sadness and there's a great you know a sadness and depressed and it has all you know all the different variations fear anxiety terror you know all of that or anger you know irritation annoyance they're all there's some real core emotions that are there and we all have it in them <clears throat> and yeah if we can give bits and pieces of them to baba it it frees us up tremendously it frees up our mind yes. yeah it's such a baba talks about there's a quote of baba about worry but i think it's applicable to all of these negative thoughts any thought really and he says the thought continues it's like a snowball and baba doesn't say this but yeah. this is the picture i have in my head yeah. you know and it's gathering momentum and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger yeah and uh you know he says like you said the slap is gone but the thoughts that follow it just keep generating this anxiety and it's such a waste of energy baba says yeah that's what i'm re reminding myself it depletes me of energy and then i'm not free you know yeah. i'm just like yeah yeah and yeah and it's like i say uh, you'll get a lot of energy if you just say take anger mm -hmm. you know if you can just get down to the level of anger in its pure form you get derive a lot of energy from it but when the anger goes into into the mind then it gets it it gets all dispersed and complicated and everything and then you lose the 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 force of anger it doesn't mean when you when you kind of observe the anger it it you're in control of the anger 
you know, you're not a victim. But once it gets into the mind, then you're kind of a victim of the anger, you might say, or victim of the sadness, the depression, or the the uh, fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see if there, uh, Mayor Prasad, anything um, to add to that? You know, Mani used to say, um, we need to find ways to put speed breakers in our dev in a daily yeah. life. Um, you know, my speed breakers are basically, I, I think uh, through the day, what are the major, most frequent tasks I do every day? Like going up the stairs, coming down the stairs, or uh, having lunch, uh, having something to eat, uh, drinking tea, um, attending meetings at my work. These are all the major tasks I do. So I, I make it a point to remember Baba before and after every one of these tasks. So th yeah. those are the speed breakers for me. Before and after, I think of him for just one or two seconds. And yeah. then I start the, before going up the stairs, I just think of him for one second. And then after going up the stairs, I think of him for one second and so on. Yeah. Every meeting I do that and, you know, these, I have meetings eight hours a day. So that's that's eight hours of putting brakes, um, speed breakers every hour. So that yeah. helps a lot. And yeah, what beautiful. you said, Jeff, also definitely helped me quite a bit, you know, you know, basically staying with the feeling and giving it to Baba. That That is very, very helpful. Yeah, yeah, I like this, the whole speed brakes thing or any any kind of... <clears throat> thing is sometimes uh, you walk up the steps, ba, 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 ba. You know, I, I try to work uh, Baba into a lot of different things. It used to be that gas tanks would go ta 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 as you're putting gas in your car. Hmm. And I'll be just ba 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 the whole time I'm putting gas in my car. <clears throat> you know, I mean, they're just, you can work out a lot of different fun yeah. things. Yeah. And yeah. And, you know, the advantage with that for me is that it's very easy to give that whole activity to Baba. Like um, I'm talking about my work, but, you know, yeah. when I think of him before a meeting and think of him after the meeting, I give the entire whatever I did during that meeting. It's yeah. so yeah. easy to give that to Baba because you know that you have, um, you know, you thought about him before and after and yeah. you ask him to work through you. Uh, so it becomes very easy at the end of the day, you know, um, when you're sleeping and you're trying to give everything that you have done to Baba, all of those become very easy. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. You know, uh, uh, Bill LePage, who was a therapist or a, a kind of a, what was he, a sociologist therapist? He would, he would deal with uh, people uh, businesses and corporations and things. And he kind of felt, he said to Baba that, you know, I have kind of an influence on things, you know, influence on these people. And, he, you know, especially in the business world. And he, he said, he felt like really didn't have the authority to do this. But Baba said, well, before you have a session with a client, you know, take my name, think of me, and then, like you say, and then afterwards. So with each session, he'd remember Baba beforehand and remember Baba after. And, and that's what Baba said. Didn't, didn't say that necessarily say his name the whole time, but just focus in on what's happening, but make sure you remember before and after. Yeah. And that way it's gathered up and given to yeah, Baba. It is, yeah, it has a tremendous value i mean it it yeah. changes your daily routine and you bring baba into every you know all the activities that you are able to do yeah i mean i try to do other thing other things like before drinking water after drinking water never been successful so i kind of i, I fail it all every day i think about it <laughs> i should remember to do this but every day i forget it yeah. I don't know what it is with water and and remembering Baba that doesn't work for some reason. Yeah. But, you know, meetings, all of that, that works really well. Um, or, you know, work given that we spend most of the day at work, you know, that really works um, 
yeah. good for looking. And it has tremendous amount of impact with respect to yeah. relationship with Baba. Yeah. So try it. Oh. If, you, if you're not trying it, yeah. uh, you know, that's really, really useful. The other thing that, um, that I also found um, extremely valuable and it, it guaranteed to make a change in your daily life is something that I heard from Jim Meyer just over the past weekend where he talked about the chant. I don't know if any of you attended that concert, but he talked about this chant about Sachidananda, Paramananda, Meher Baba, Vidyanand for 15 minutes a day and work it into your schedule. And he said, I'll guarantee you that, you know, it'll, you'll see a difference in you. I found that to be so true. You know, I've only done that for a week, but it's, it has, it definitely has results. Yeah, beautiful. No, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. I see Mahu has her hand raised there in the shadows. Mahu. Okay. Yes, I'm in the shadow tonight. Is <laughs> that <Yeah>. okay? <laughs> That's all right. Believe me, you don't want to see me like this. There's something <laughs> going on. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, good, very good discussion. And I guess we're all challenged by that. But I wanted to uh, share something from different angle that Bobo actually um, brought it up and it's in a Lord Meher uh, during the group result. So one of these reporters, I think it's better for me to read it than paraphrase it, right? Okay, Would you want yeah, me to go read ahead. It or give a summary. Uh, is read that, it. Is it small? Yeah, go ahead. Read yeah, it. I shouldn't mess up with Bobo's words. So anyway, um, it's, it goes like this. W one of the reporters remarked, Although one makes a determined beginning, one's enthusiasm slowly wanes when there seems nothing to show for the efforts. And this is followed by a feeling of mental depression. Meher Baba answered, yes, this is quite common. Whatever the efforts you make, whatever the failures that seem to result whatever the dis despair that follows, all have their roots in the fact that you love yourself more than you love God. In loving yourself as wholeheartedly as you should have loved God, failures and despair stand up prom prominently before you. This is quite natural. Therefore, do not let the fact of your depression depress you. Have mm. you given thought as to where this depression was, was prior to its appearance? It has emerged unasked. And as such, it must vanish. Your forced efforts to overcome it will only imprint itself all the more on your mind and create further binding. So be completely indifferent to it and it will disappear. The solution is to love God as he should be loved. Love for God only counts. So in this, I think Bobo is opening another horizon uh, you know, more deeper as to where is our despair, uh, unresolved feelings, depression, uh, sadness, and so forth are coming from. Perhaps is because we spend more time with ourselves and uh, we're taking ourselves more seriously and take God lightly. Now, there's a fine line here that I really like to talk about it. And those were the mistakes when I started my life in a full spirituality. And uh, I thought, uh, you know, by loving God uh, and not taking yourself seriously, 
um, it, it means that you ignore yourself, you really don't attend uh, to your, your needs or, or what makes you happy and so forth. So that was my very childish attitude uh, toward the spirituality and especially what Baba in this Advent is bringing to us. Um, Self-love and uh, nurturing our true self and inner self is very important. And Baba lacks that. And as we looked at Mandeli's lives, they did it too. They have limited hours, they had limited hours on visiting time in Merozot. They take their nap. They take all their supplements, diet, and so forth because they live for God. They yeah. think that their body is a temple of God. They think that they belong to God. So they are taking themselves for God. So same thing, if we really take into heart and live for God, we perhaps live a more freer life. We don't give so much importance to the thoughts that come in. Thoughts obviously comes in and, and they are the result of sanskaras. You know, sanskaras piled up and thoughts kicks in and here we go. So as Baba says in this code, don't get trapped by it. Ignore it. It came on us and it vanishes on us. Start thinking about something else. And what is better, you know, than thinking about Meher Baba, your master, <laughs> than anything else? Just repeat his name, you know. I mean, I'm trying. Many times I fail too. It's not that I have a good handle on it. But I also realize when thoughts are strong, if I repeat Baba's name nonstop, Baba, 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 without a pause, the thought goes. It has absolutely no permission to manifest itself. So that's another uh, tactic, you know, attack that we we can use, and Baba. Mm has helped us just repeat his name when the thought anxiety comes or fear and so forth mm -hmm. non-stop probably for two three minutes and the miracle happens that's it Thank yeah you. yeah no it's i call that plan a you know yeah. where uh turning to baba and baba's name and everything you're able to change channels <clears throat> from the exactly. world of thought to the, th the world of love and feeling. <clears throat> but if you're not able, what, what I'm talking about is plan B. It's when you can't, when the thoughts keep persisting, even with Bob's name, because you're troubled by something a little more profoundly, then this is a method of dealing with that, of giving the feeling to Baba or being aware of the emotion and trying to go deeply into it. <clears throat> And then uh, as a manner of, uh, you know, of being able to let go of the thinking and, and get down to a feeling level. <clears throat> but that, that's because sometimes things are too powerful and we may not have the ability to turn so powerfully to Baba and leave it all of that behind. <clears throat> but what you say is that I call that plan A. And after many years of my life now, that, that works for me quite well. Yeah, me too. After yeah. all these years, finally. Yeah. <laughs> but like if some crisis, some powerful crisis occurred <clears throat> in yes. your life, uh, you might have to, you know, go into plan B and work from there. <clears throat> uh, yeah, anyway, right. that, it's... Hey, so look at uh, Diane and Terry. Uh, um, you know, I had a birthday poem for you and I can't find it. We'll wait. <laughs> but I, I, I'm just, I didn't have any luck finding it. <clears throat> it's by a guy named um, John O'Donohue. Just looking at you, Jeff, is a birthday poem. Oh. <laughs> 
I don't know. It might be like a nightmare. Right? <laughs> uh -uh. We'll, we'll take a song. Well, I don't know. I think I might wake up the house here at it's this okay. hour. It's okay. <clears throat> I feel it. I don't know. I, you know, I bet if Mayor Prasad could find it, it's, um, it's uh, John O'Donohue, and it's uh, I think called the birthday poem. We'll see if he can find it. <clears throat> He's pretty resourceful. Sean, oh, what yeah. do you have to say? <clears throat> <clears throat> I have to say that there is quote, love God as he should be. This should be need some elaboration how it should be loved. You follow me? Uh, now go ahead. Say that again. Just now <clears throat> they say a quote is there. Love God as he should be. Loved. Yeah. Love God as he should be loved. And how he should be loved, this I need to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the kind of thing that Mayor Prasad is talking about, work Baba in, I mean, this is what we do, work Baba in as much as we can during the day. Oh, hey, Mayor Prasad found it. Okay. Mayor Prasad, how about reading it? Oh, you want me to read it? Well, okay. I don't know how I could get it. Oh, oh wait, we got it right here. Hey, man, there are people that... <laughs> this is... I'll read it. Okay, great. Okay. <clears throat> okay, this is... Uh, Blessed be the mind that dreamed the day the blueprint of your life would begin to glow on earth, illuminating all the faces and voices that would arrive to invite your soul to growth. Praise be your father and mother who loved you before you were, entrusted to call you here with no idea who you would be. Blessed be those who have loved you into becoming who you were meant to be. Blessed be those who have crossed your life with dark gifts of hurt and loss that have helped to school your heart in the art of disappointment. When desolation surrounded you, blessed be those who looked for you and found you, their kind hands urgent to open a blue window in the gray wall formed around you. Blessed be the gifts you never notice, your health, eyes to behold the world, thoughts to countenance the unknown, memory to harvest vanished days, your heart to feel the world's waves, your breath to breathe the nourishment of distance, made intimate by earth. On this echoing day of your birth, may you open the gift of solitude in order to receive your soul. Enter the generosity of silence to hear your hidden heart and know the serenity of stillness to be enfolded anew by the miracle of your being. Jay Baba. Beautiful. Jay Baba. Ah, oh <laughs> isn't that, a, isn't that a, is an Irish poet? It's gorgeous. Just yeah. gorgeous. And I say blessed be a lot. It, blessed go, oh, yeah. I use it <laughs> a lot. It's one of my things. So that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> we take that. Now, what well, Terry, you re I mean, uh, Diane, you read something earlier. What were was that something you wrote? No, I, I read a Michael Child's poem. Oh. No, but then I I read 
the the grace one the grace is that yeah. do you want to hear that one yeah yeah i i i'm it might take me a moment no yeah. I, actually i got it right here <laughs> yeah it's called everyday grace by stella nasanovich it can happen like that meeting at the market buying tires amid the smell of rubber the grating sound of jackhammers and drills, anywhere we share stories and grace flows between us. The tire center waiting room becomes a healing place as one speaks of her husband's heart valve replacement, bed sores from complications. A man speaks of multiple surgeries, notes his fall, false appearance as strong and healthy. I share my sister's death from brain, breast cancer her youngest only seven. A woman rises, gives her name, Mrs. Henry, then takes my hand. Suddenly an ordinary day becomes holy ground. Beautiful, but who wrote that? Her name oh, is yeah. Stella Nasanovich. Oh, I can picture that very well. <laughs> I've been in those rooms <laughs> at the, uh, uh, the car dealers with the smell of rubber tires and and in a in the waiting room there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Can you go to the and see what the, that where that Well, let's see. We got Janet Jacobs there. <clears throat> let's see if we get J Janet out of the shadows here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ah. for a minute here. <laughs> yeah. So, Jeff, would you would you um um Mayor Prasad talked about Sachitananda, Paramamananda, Meher Baba Vidyanan. I I yeah. love I, I I was doing that this morning and I I couldn't quite get the beginning, I couldn't quite get the tune to begin with. So if you yeah, could, let, let me just see if I can uh you guys keep on talking. I'll go get a guitar. I'll play it. Okay, perfect. See, we're getting him to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm a, well, I think of all the times he gets people to do, to, stuff. to do stuff. So Right, right, right. Exactly. So, so happy uh, birthday, Terry. Terry and Thank you, John. Yeah. yeah. So I'm lying in bed, as you can probably uh, tell. Very comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of like try to keep hidden if I can. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. I see your smile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I can also paste the link if you forget again. Uh, okay. The Tim Meyer, uh, Tim Meyer concert has that. I'll I'll post the link here and give yeah, you. Yeah. Well, I, okay. So I can get that Jim Meyer concert on, on the Baba Zoom YouTube, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I'll give you the time at which it starts so you can <laughs> see that and... Okay, great, because he did it at the beginning, toward the beginning, am yeah. I right? right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That really struck me too. It was like, I, I, it's easier for me to sing something like that than to just not to just, but to say Baba's name, sometimes that yeah. becomes rote. And this became, the melody became, involved more of my heart, I think you could say, more more of my whole being or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That and- um, A couple times a day, also... got in my head, my got in there. But I don't think I pronounce things right either. You know, the other song that was really very touching, and I hear this pretty much every day, actually multiple times a day, is um, Jeff's song um, that they played at uh, Fred Ellis uh, Remembrance. Oh. It has such a beautiful, you know, very beautiful longing kind of song. What, was, what song is that? Uh, called The Bridge, right? Uh... Yeah. Yes, the bridge. And Jeff, if one day you can sing that healing song, 
The yeah, one I'll you're saying at Mirabat. <laughs> 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 I listened to it many times. <laughs> A birthday concert for Terry. So I'll tell you, the, uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. I'll tell you the history of this. You know, at one time, I think it was probably in around 1954, Baba said to uh, Bal Kalchuri that he, in, he was just like one of the Mondali, never given a talk or anything. And Baba said that he was <clears throat> going to send him up to Hamirpur, which is in North India, uh, uh, to talk at this gathering. <clears throat> Now, he was kind of terrified. He did not want to. He never talked about to Baba. And Baba said, you know, don't worry, I'll tell you what to say. And, you know, I, I think maybe a, over a couple of months and, and he was kind of getting nervous about what is he going to say. And Baba had said that, <clears throat> that he given this message about how he was going to have this tragic death. And and, you know, that what was that? That's that message in 54 his violent death and everything. And so he kind of imagined these people are uh, up in Hamirpur were going to ask him all these questions about Baba's final declaration and everything. <clears throat> so he was quite worried and time kept going by and he was getting more and more nervous. And finally it got to about a day before and, and Bao says to uh, uh, Bao, uh, says to Baba, you know, what am I going to talk about? You know, you're going to give me some message to, to deliver. And Baba said, yeah, here, here's the message. You know, Satchidanand Paramanand Meher Baba Vidyanand. Bao thinks, oh my God, <clears throat> just four words. I mean, I, that, uh, this doesn't help me at all. He was like nervous. I mean, what is he going to do? I mean, they want to find out about Baba and is he going to drop his body? And, and what is all this destruction, the three quarters of the world? And, and then he's just got these four words. So he takes the train up there and partway up to uh, Hamirpur, there's a, a, a stop called Jansi. J-N-S-I, is that J-A-N-S-I? Jasima, is that? Yeah, J H A N S I. Yeah, Jansi. <clears throat> and so, so he stopped there, and all, all the all the babblers from that area were at the platform, and they saw him, <clears throat> and they said, "What did Baba say? What did Baba say?" And he said, "Sachidanan Paramanan Meher Baba Vidyanan." <clears throat> well, what they did is they took that, that they took that uh, uh, those words and made a chant out of it. And they started this chant and they telephoned up to Hamirpur <clears throat> so that when he got off <clears throat> the train up in Hamirpur, everybody was singing this chant. I mean, it was like, I mean, they were dancing and it was, and it completely relieved them of any anxiety. Oh, oh wow, something. Is that me? Anyway, so that's how uh, that's how that came about. So Satchidanand Paramanand Meher Baba Vidyanand. One second, I got to put on original sound. <clears throat> The Paramanan Meru Baba Vidyanan Sachidanan Paramanan Meru Baba Vidyanan Meru Baba Vidyanan Meru Baba Vidyanam, 
Parmanam Meher Baba Viryanam Sachidanam Parmanam Meher Baba Viryanam 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 Sachidanam Dukparmanam Meher Baba Viryanam Sachidanam Dukparmanam Meher Baba Viryanam 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 Satchidanam Varmanam Meher Baba Viryanam Satchidanam Varmanam Meheru Baba Vidyana Whew, oh. Anyway, that's it. Beautiful, thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. That's it. Thank you so much, Jeff. That yeah. really helped. Besides, it's really nice. It's kind of like a lullaby. Yeah. Well, usually we get it kind of revved up, you know, with tablas and everything, and and it gets gets going for a while, and then then we kind of bring it down to a quiet ending. Mm. Well. And let, Jeff. Yeah. There is. Mehrchan Nuri, he can tell many things about Baba. Yeah. Mehrchan Nuri. Mehrchan Nuri, you invite him. Yeah. Yeah, I know uh, him from way back. And his, and his yes. two brothers. Ram and... Uh, oh. You have, you have that song? Can you play that? Do you know how can you play that song? <clears throat> this the yeah, song starts This song starts out in the um it starts out in the lagoon cabin and you'll recognize some of the places. Is it possible to play it? Uh I think Jaisimma has to play it. I don't have the permission. Well, or they can play they can play the recording too. Oh, they can play the recording. Yeah. I can see uh <clears throat> Do you, do you have it, just Seema? I can find it out, but uh, Prasad, you can now, I guess, I guess you can share now. Huh? Okay, yeah, let me do that. They, they've got it. I think uh, Mayor Prasad has got it. Okay, here we go. Sweet fragrance fills your cabin Welcomes me as I come in When I'm quiet I hear the fullness In the room where you have been Like the sand of secret flowers there's a beauty I receive I can sit with you for hours closer than the air I breathe I can see so well mark the 
scenes of favorite stories that my heart still longs to tell in the pictures you are smiling on the path beside the pond as I follow in your footsteps Touched by something far beyond I reach out to hold the railing Rest my hand and start to grin Now I stand where you were standing Touching where your hands have been On this bridge you meet me closer Crossing over time and space These are tears of grateful wonder Flowing down my smiling face Now I find I'm often smiling Just to turn and feel you here I can sense your sacred timing Everywhere I go, you're near I can trace your human history Touch the cushion on your chair You left so much grace and mystery I can feel you everywhere You left so much grace and mystery I can feel you Thank you, Mayor Prasad. Yeah, it's what a beautiful picture of you. So beautiful. That was uh, uh, that was a, a film of Fred and Ella Winterfeld. Who that were... was a film of Jeff Wolverton singing. <laughs> I yep. get routed. I get pulled into these things. Justly so. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah there was a um i don't know if it was a picture or a painting towards the end of baba alone on the bridge yeah i think that's by joe de sabatino mm. wow yeah joe uh he's a i don't know if you know joe know de sabatino he yeah he he's a very talented guy in many ways <laughs> i mean poetry playwriting uh, playwriting yeah painting painting he can do a lot of different things quite a universal human soul yeah <clears throat> so hey um you people still alive <laughs> <laughs> hey yeah well marcia we kind of got her going there 
Uh, Elizabeth Wise. I wonder if we can see her out of, behind the. Let me just start my screen. Uh, hi. Hey. hey. <laughs> I've been in I've been in motion this whole time in a car in and out. So I just wanted yeah. to peek my head in and and say yeah. say hello. Where whereabouts do you live? I'm in San Diego. San Diego. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. good. I read one of your poems, Elizabeth, and it was so beautiful. Just beautiful. oh, thank you, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yeah, I, you're. I hope... oh, go ahead. You're always welcome to read any of your poetry here. This is all potluck. <laughs> I didn't know what the format was. I, I just I'd always seen it on the schedule and been like, that's so perfect because everything else is just very early in the day for me. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I had to sign off now, but I'll definitely be back to this. This has been yeah. great. And and really, yeah, bring bring your poetry. I mean, that's <laughs> it's great to hear all the different Why voices. All right, Jay Baba, good night, y'all. Yeah. Or good yeah. morning. <laughs> good. <laughs> Late. Yeah. Well, Mayor Chand has arrived. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. Let's see if I had a, something else. Um, I'll share something while you're looking, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I came across this just the other day. Um, this is from a book, Bill Ruba Days, and we just saw the video of Mayor Sender, so it reminded me of Kitty. Yeah. So, um, Someone asked Kitty if she felt she had reached the point of love that we've been discussing, of feeling love for everyone and everything, that omnipresent praise and awareness of Baba and his love in all things at all times, that state to which we are all aspiring I watched fascinated as Kitty really took that very intimate question deeply into her being. She didn't answer for a long time and everyone was very quiet. She stammered that she had never really thought about that before. Then thinking very deeply she slowly said, I don't really know. All I know is that I'm always trying to please Baba, to think what would please him. Beautiful, yeah. <clears throat> In some ways it's like a, a, like a, a young child that is, gives so much love to the world and innocence and purity and everything and has no idea what a, a source of love and and beauty and and purity in the world that they, they don't know and and mm -hmm. kitty was a source of love for so many people and all that and i'm sure she just didn't give it, that a thought she was focusing on on what baba might want you know, beautiful. You know, here's an interesting thing, if I can find it. I, you know, I worked on this book called The New Life. And I wish I had had this quote here. Because it, it tells you a lot about the new life. The experience, uh, this is, uh, Huh. Huh. I have a quote. To yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I got this from in his love. Uh, 
God can be loved and seen just as you see gross things. So be hopeful of life because we are all meant to love God and see Him within ourselves. And I give you my blessing for this love so that some, some one of you may be worthy of loving God. And I want to stress this point that we are all one. In spite of our suffering, poverty and hopelessness, we are in God. I give you all my love. Yeah, I I like that. That was the first time I, I mean, Baba doesn't say that some, that we can see God. We can see Baba as we see objects in the gross world. That read that for that read the whole thing again. I mean, it, it it's like we think Baba doesn't have to be just ethereal. Yeah. God can be loved and seen just as you see gross things. So be hopeful of life because we are all meant to love God and see him within ourselves. And I give you my blessing for this love so that some one of you may be worthy of loving God. And I want to stress this point that we are all one. In spite of our suffering, poverty and hopelessness, we are in God. I give you all my love. Avtar Baba. Yeah. Beautiful. This is... Um, uh, the Rustam Falahati had read the book Meher Baba's New Life, <clears throat> and he was very affected by the suffering that Baba endured, and, and the Mandali endured during the New Life. And and he thought to ask Meru what her experience was like. She was one of the four women in the new life. And Rustam said, I can't imagine how anyone can go through so much suffering. What were your feelings and thoughts? Were you not fed up of the suffering, the cold, the hunger, and, and the very life itself? What giant strength you all had. What was it? that sustained all of you. She's asking that of Meru. And Meru's, Meru's answer left me wonderstruck at the completeness of her focus on Baba. She said, our suffering was nothing compared to Baba's suffering. We, we couldn't bear to see his suffering, so intense it was for him. How, in spite of bad health, he continued putting up with the adversities of his universal work. We felt so helpless that we could do nothing to help him. Our complete focus was on his suffering. We were not aware of anything else. Our constant thought was what we could do to ease his suffering. When Baba asked us to do small things for him, we tried our best because we wanted to ease some of his burden of suffering. Our minds and hearts were constantly occupied with this thought. Imagine the severe winter in North India, the cold wave coming on, rains lashing, and Baba slept out in the open. He had only a thin tent to protect him from the wind and rains. The, the tent was also leaking and the cold water was dripping onto him. This was only the physical aspect of the suffering that we saw. We do not know what was his inner suffering for the universal work he was doing at the time. He traveled several kilometers on foot in a day, bowing down to thousands of sadhus. When he would return from such trips, his feet would be sore and bleeding, his body would be racked with pain, and his neck would be stiff with extreme pain. In spite of this, he continued his work of bowing down until he achieved the desired result to complete his to his complete satisfaction. Only then he stopped. Later on, he developed severe problems of the neck, which remained till the end of his life. When you see this kind of heart-moving suffering of the beloved, who undergoes it out of his love for you, where is the question of noticing our tiny suffering or complaining about it? Wow. wow. I have a very relevant quote 
Good, also yeah. from Baba, which I really never heard of before, but it's very relevant. It goes, I work internally for the world. And if you, while meditating, forget your body and concentrate on me, you share in the work. Ooh. Say yeah. that one, read that one again. That is very good. I work internally for the world. And if you, while meditating, forget your body and concentrate on me, you share in the work. Meher Baba. Wow. <clears throat> you know, here's one thing that um, back in the early 70s when I was there in India, and we were in Mandalay Hall, <clears throat> sitting around, and Erich was sharing stories about Baba. And just somehow it just came into my head. I said to Erich, looking over at him, I said, Erich, I have a feeling that if I were to inhabit your body for a half hour, all I want to do is go unconscious and asleep. And he flashed a look at me like the, the amount of... My, the amount of suffering that he was able to bear, and, and he was robust and lively, you know, and very casual and relaxed, but somehow I got a view into him in a different way, and I had a feeling if I were to inhabit his body for a half hour, I would be crushed with just the amount of pain and suffering that he was able to bear and just be very relaxed and casual. <laughs> without our even necessarily knowing it. But he gave me a flash of acknowledgement. I don't think anybody else saw. You know, I just got a flash from him. But they were mountains. They, they bore tremendous suffering for Baba. I, once, I was once working on Baokao Shuri in one of the back rooms at the Trust. And I had him all, I was massaging him and I... I I had him all to myself. He was lying flat on this cot and I was working on him and I had him in my clutches, so to speak, so I, I could ask him anything. And I, I said, I said, Bao, I'm going to quote to you a famous Sufi line and you tell me if you found it to be true for you in the Mandali. And the quote was, suffering is he Happiness is from him. Suffering is he. He is suffering. Happiness is from him. It's a, it's a line from Mansur Halaj, actually, the Sufi perfect master. I, it, did I say, was that, would you say that was true for you in a Mandali? And he said, yes. In a very kind of poignant way, he said, we were only aware, aware of his suffering year in and year out, day by day, moment to moment. We were aware of his suffering. But if anybody came to Merizad, they got the happiness from him. They, they, they were, I mean, how could they be in bliss when Baba is right over there in infinite suffering? You know, you, you, have, to, you have to speak the same language. But they kind of hid that from us the same way a, a father who goes to the factory and works all double shifts and comes home with the kids. He doesn't tell them what, how exhausting and how difficult the boss is and, and everything. He picks the kids up in his arms and, and plays with them. He can't let them know what, you know, what his experience is. It would, dispo it would spoil their childhood. And, and they, they, Mandali didn't quite let on. <laughs> you had to, they had to be looking for stuff like that, you know. Boy, there was that beautiful quote the other day. I don't, I, I don't know, Diane and Tara, if you can remember this, it was from a hospice. It was, um, grief is love that has nowhere to go. That's exactly it. Yeah, we wrote it down. Grief is, have, 
is love that has no place to go. Your beloved, that the beloved you had is not there, so the love can't go to that one anymore. And so it stays with you. Beautiful. That, that, that line comes out of real experience. Mm -hmm. There's another quote that it reminds me of its <clears throat> different type, but <clears throat> yeah. there was a saint called uh, Exa Saint Xavier. <clears throat> and they used to have, out in Seattle, I remember, um, what was the name of that thrift stores? Um, I'll write in the morning. Dollar Tree? The Dollar Tree? <clears throat> no, this is a thrift store. Um, oh. Salvation Army? It's, it's like the Salvation Army. Um, ah, anyway, it was the same. I th think this, this Goodwill? particular. Huh? Goodwill? No, it, it has. Um, oh, I'm just. I, it's okay. Yeah, anyway, it, it has his name in it, I think, somehow. St. Xavier. Uh, but anyway, so he, he his was helping the poor and feeding the poor. And he had this line that I like very much. It is only by feeling your love that the poor will forgive you for your generosity. It is only by feeling your love that the poor will forgive you for your generosity. But that that it's it's say it, it's it's something that comes out of someone who knows that experience deeply. Yeah. Well. It's no longer Terry's birthday on the East Coast, so I think. Uh oh. Leave. Yeah. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> let's let's see if Merchan has a final quote for us. Uh, amen, Baba. <clears throat> you have a good uh, Baba quote for you uh, for us. I just today I just want to say something. Yeah. <clears throat> That's the question asked to somebody, the Mandali. Is Meher Baba physically on earth now? The answer. No. He dropped his physical body about 12.15 in Indian time on 31st January 1969 at Meherabad, Meherazad, Ahmednagar, India. Meher Baba is the God man, shed his man form, but, but is with us as our eternal beloved. In his man form is stationed himself in India, but now he is everywhere. Believe that. I am the ancient one. Do not doubt that for a moment. There is a possibility of my being anyone, anyone else. I am not this body that you see. I only, it is only a coat I put on when I visit you. I am infinite consciousness. I sit with you play and laugh with you. But simultaneously, I am working on all planes of existence. Jai Mer Baba. Beautiful. But you know, Mer Chan, this is interesting that <clears throat> Erich said, and I, I, I got to get someone who actually got it from him. I heard it secondhand that Erich said that Baba is always physically on the earth. I mean, I... I was very surprised at that. So what I mean is, is that <clears throat> at any time we could see him. And some of the Baba people have even seen Baba in physical form after he dropped his body <clears throat> and actually felt his touch. So <clears throat> he can even pay visits uh, to us. So you never can tell, you know, he might be on the sofa behind you too there. <laughs> <laughs> and he could be Kirtana, had, Kirtana who you and I both love yeah. has a song um, I'm going to ruin it but the lyrics are basically 
you could be standing next to me. Right and, next to me. In, you know, so she I, was re referring to Jesus, and she said, "Yeah, you know, you could be the person standing next to me, and it's the yeah. truth." <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it's, and and plus his his personality is always here. <clears throat> You know, so I heard a similar thing, Jeff. Except that the minor variation I heard is that um, he is here as if he's physically present. Uh, I only heard that's, the as if part. Yeah, that's also <clears throat> Bob himself said that for the next hundred or two hundred years or so. It, it's as if I'm physically here. Yeah, I got to find the person who heard that. I think a buddy of mine heard Eric say that. <clears throat> yeah. We need to say good night to you. Yeah, I'm I'm set too. Let's uh, take a few <laughs> moments of, of silence and then we'll uh, yeah. Jay Baba, 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 and Priya, see you later. Yeah. Baba. Yeah. See you guys next Sunday, perhaps. We'll see. Jay Seema, good. Thank you for. We keep. Uh, Jay Seema, this keeps you up. Do you have to work tomorrow? I work, but I enjoy this, Jeff. I can't, you... miss, can't afford to miss this. <laughs> yeah. So you're. We're keeping you up past your bedtime, though. 